Hello, I'm Raj Singh, the Chief Technology Officer at Applied Research Works, uh, commonly referred to as AirW. Today, I'm excited to guide you through some of the innovative strategies we've deployed to remarkably advance our premier healthcare IT solution uh, called Coziva. I'll delve into how we've harnessed the power of multimodal retrieval augmented generation, also referred to as RAG, and how we've integrated human expertise directly within our AI framework to achieve some remarkable results. I'll begin by providing a snapshot of Kaziva's capabilities and the hurdles faced by our users today. Following that, I'll dive into the intricacies of our AI framework and the tailored solution we crafted to align with our users' goals, with a special emphasis on its architecture. Afterwards, I'll showcase some of the impactful results and insights gained from deploying our AI-driven application, uh, culminating my recommendations or suggestions uh, it, for healthcare IT applications in general, uh, and some foresight regarding the future tra trajectory of our project. So let's start with our story. So Kaziva, uh, for more than a decade, has transformed remarkably, growing from its initial phase as a patient portal into a nationally recognized platform po population health. Currently, it powers value-based care incentives and workflows for an impressive network of over 20 million individuals and 47,000 healthcare providers. Throughout its evolution, we've enriched Kaziva with a variety of modules designed to optimize value for a health plan and provider organization customers. Our solutions span from essential gap and care reports across quality and risk adjustment programs to sophisticated uh, analytics, uh, health information exchange, and seamless EHR integrations. Uh, in total, we have 12 modules developed uh, to address various aspects of population health, and our aim extends beyond merely just serving our customers. We're committed to establishing new benchmarks for attaining so-called quintuple aim in healthcare uh, which, uh, if you don't know, prioritizes equitable, high-quality care at reduced costs, enhancing the experience for both the patients and providers. Our system accordingly caters to a diverse array of users today, and I'll th share three user stories that have been instrumental in the development of our multimodal RAG human-in-the-loop AI framework. These stories highlight the real-world challenges and aspirations of our users, providing valuable insights that have informed our approach. Later, I'll delve into the specifics of this AI framework and demonstrate its seamless integration with Kaziva's core modules, showcasing how it uh, both enhances the value uh, you know, uh, that our users uh, gain from the platform. The first user story centers on the aspirations and needs of business owners. Uh, these are the folks that rely on Kaziva for strategic business decision-making. They desire quick and dependable access to actionable insights and comprehensive summaries that empower them to make well-informed business choices. Importantly, they wish to achieve this without the burden of sifting through countless workbooks, drill down pivots and filters within our analytic suite, which you can see here uh, on the right. The second user story highlights the requirements of population health program managers who are uh, in the pursuit of typically subject matter expertise in areas such as risk adjustment, HEDIS programs, CMS policies, uh, and need to access user guides, manuals, and best practices. Their goal is to swiftly acquire the essential knowledge and guidance needed for effective decision-making and adherence to compliance standards. And all this needs to be done um, without it being too time-consuming or requiring extensive research. Uh, these users face the challenge of navigating through a myriad of continuously updated sources, which present information in various formats, including text, uh, tables, diagrams, and videos, which you can see here uh, on the right. The third user story sheds light on the experiences of medical coders within our system. These are the folks dedicated to accurately coding diagnosis following the most current ICD-10 CM guidelines. Their objective is to guarantee compliance optimize reimbursement, and reduce possibility of coding mistakes. These professionals confront uh, various challenges, uh, sorting through hundreds of medical charts for auditing and coding purposes. The task is complicated because they're referencing extensive coding guidelines and specialty guides, which present a mix of text, flow diagrams, and images. Furthermore, they must consider the implications their coding decisions have on value-based care performance measures, risk adjustment, adding just additional layers of complexity to their work. 
So each of these three distinct users stories converges though on shared challenges encountered by users. That's the need. So they you know, all have need for extensive training. They struggle with information overload and compartmentalization. They have difficulty interpreting complex data and the absence of tailored interconnected insights. Moreover, they experience challenges in filtering uh, outdated or irrelevant information. Consequently, their unified objective and aspirations include desire for streamlined access to summaries tailored to enhance their decision-making process. They seek accomplish this efficiently without excessive time and effort. And additionally, it's crucial for them to rely on the accuracy of this information, uh, ensuring that it remains adaptive and up-to-date amidst, uh, amidst uh, evolving circumstances. So this rationale led to the creation of our multimodal RAG, uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation Human and Loop AI Framework, which presented itself as the optimal solution in the wake of advancements in uh, LLMs or, or large language models. This uh, framework is engineered to interact with our users in real time, harnessing information across multiple modalities, such as text, tables, images, and diagrams. Uh, it incorporates the crucial roles of auditors and reviewers in the stages of data aggregation, curation, feedback, and oversight. And the nature of LLMs with their opaque parametric knowledge and the complexity of tracing the information back to its origin, that's well understood. But um, it is well understood and recognized that providing the LLM with the retrieved augmented information alongside the user queries enables it to deliver responses that are not only more precise and accurate, but also easier to interpret and trace back to their sources. This accordingly enhances the usability and trustworthiness of the information provided. Needless to say, this AI framework uh, gave rise to an AI assistant within our product, which we've named Kaziva Companion. While you might be familiar with similar assistants from other companies, I'm keen today to share the journey behind creating Kaziva Companion and its application and addressing the user stories I outlined earlier. This evolution reflects our commitment to leverage cutting edge technology to solve real world challenges. Uh, illustrate, and I hope to illustrate the tangible benefits and enhancements Kaziva Companion brings to our users. Uh, through its advanced capabilities and user-centric design. But let's start with the overall AI framework. So imagine essentially an intricate framework designed to harness the expertise of human subject matter experts here. Uh, they kickstart the process by pinpointing the essential types of information needed for our AI assistants, such as the policy documents, product specifications, et cetera. This wealth of information is then meticulously segmented uh, preserving their origin pages, sections, and intricate parent-child relationships as metadata. Uh, this is all done within the hierarchical multimodal doc element classifier and splitter uh, within our framework. Uh, this tool separately, uh, this tool uh, uh, separates the text tables, uh, images, uh, you know, that are reside within, you know, these various documents, and then uh, uses uh, uh, specific prompts to summarize that information through a uh, large language model and store that uh, transform information uh, in our uh, vector stores and uh, doc stores, uh, with the vector stores also having the vectorized representations of those summaries. So when, so, you know, with this, when the user queries, the assistant, it embarks on search for similarity, uh, uh, similarly matching uh, summaries, uh, and then retrieves both the summary as well as the relevant link documents from the doc store. Uh, when it does this, we employ a self-querying uh, mechanism so that uh, in addition to it just uh, doing a similarity match on the vectors, it also parses out the necessary metadata that it can use to further refine how it filters the information from our vector stores and doc stores. Um, after that, that information um, is used uh, to construct a prompt, and the prompt that's created varies based on the use case. Uh, but all in all, the LLM or, or agent uh, will then take that uh, uh, prompt and uh, or task and uh, use it uh, to provide the user with an answer. So with certain tasks, as I'll kind of illustrate in a moment, uh, they can be a bit more involved. And in that case, it requires the uh, agent in our system to actually interact with tools that allow them to access, for example, our database or various other APIs to make the uh, uh, integration more seamless within the workflows uh, of our users within our product. And then 
you know, there's a human that's both uh, here in the beginning, but here at the uh, end of this loop, that's making sure that the information uh, is, you know, properly audited and reviewed. So especially if there's any negative responses, uh, that human subject matter expert will update the metadata summaries and content essentially leveraged by the AI assistant. So uh, it's a process or framework that continuously improves uh, with a very user-centric approach. A little bit about the hierarchical splitting and self-querying. Uh, that was a natural progression for us. Um, it's akin to, for example, a well-organized library uh, that categorizes books either randomly or decides to do those based on like the name, publication year, genre. Obviously, we took the latter strategy, and that's why the uh, splitter uh, and element classifier that we used uh, arranges essentially our data in this hierarchical uh, manner or this with this parent-child relationship, but then also incorporates very uh, relevant metadata that's needed for us to further enrich essentially how this information is accessed during specific queries or use cases within our product. Uh, for example, a traditional search method might falter when searching for details on the highest risk uh, HCCs in Medicare risk adjustment model. Uh, because the highest risk might not, uh, you know, or RAF might not be readily visible in the split text or chunks. Uh, but uh, by employing like a self querying mechanism, uh, you know, that acts on these uh, 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 higher cool split chunks uh, that have been annotated with the RAF, uh, uh, you know, for the HCC, our system can then uh, more accurately pinpoint the relevant HCC and then provide the appropriate context to, alongside the user's query to the LLM to provide a very uh, accurate response and very precise one to the user. I should also mention that uh, we employ various prompt templates uh, tailored to specific use cases. Uh, this is a strategy that we learned uh, is invaluable during the development of our knowledge retrieval system. Uh, for instance, when you're dealing with flow diagrams from coding guidelines, uh, these are, um, uh, you know, can be summarized of course, but we, uh, decide to actually uh, encode them as clinical rules in some JSON format, as you can see here on the right. Um, this really just makes it easier uh, for our agents that are designed to interact with the applications to perform specific actions. Uh, and it takes, it allows them to perform a more nuanced approach to uh, uh, engaging essentially the users and helping them achieve uh, their overall goals uh, while driving a, a well-rounded uh, user experience. Here's some uh, practical instances of how Kaziba Companion operates uh, within our analytics products. Um, so, uh, and I'm hoping this showcases uh, its effectiveness. Uh, so users, for example, have the ability to just make straightforward requests. Uh, they can ask, uh, you know, show me my sickest patients. And what it'll do is um, uh, use that query, retrieve the relevant context from the vector stores, doc stores. Uh, on you know uh, what it means for um, you know a sickest patient in the context of our analytics product. That means specific workbooks, specific functions need to be invoked. And so what the agent will then do based on that retrieved context is perform the relevant action uh, and provide the user with a link. So at the end of the day, what they have um, a click away is a pre-sorted patient list uh, by a RAF. Um, which is essentially uh, correlated with uh, sickness uh, in the context of risk adjustment. In another scenario, a business owner seeks detailed information on the performance within counties they're overseeing. So they're asking, uh, look, I'm going to go into a performance management meeting and I need, some, I need to know something about the performance across the county so I can plan for uh, 2024. So in this context, the, it's not just a matter of just taking um, static uh, information in documents and uh, using that as the context uh, for uh, the, uh, you know, alongside the user's query uh, within the LLM. We actually have to grab data and we actually have to have the agent perform uh, subsequent uh, reasoning uh, uh, actions um, uh, to produce a, a result that uh, is you know, meaningful for the user. So in this case, uh, what it will do is pull the relevant data based on the user context. Uh, it, it, what it does is, you know, creates trend lines, and based on those trend lines, uh, provides a summary essentially to the user, for example, to focus on um, that you know there were uptrends in San Francisco as regarding the A1C measure, uh, but uh, they may want to allocate additional uh, resources for other measures that have been lagging as far as improvements go. 
So this example illustrates the ability of uh, our AI framework uh, to query uh, internal data sources and apply analytical tools as well to provide more precise and relevant information to our users. And in this scenario, uh, uh, the is a more basic one where a government program uh, manager is simply asking for uh, final and counter data diagnostic filtering logic. Uh, this is more straightforward. Uh, this information you know, typically exists in uh, specifications and one can just provide that context uh, based on basic similarity matching to uh, give the user what they need. And then uh, this final scenario, uh, medical coder, while they're reviewing the patient chart, uses our coding tool uh, uh, to add and review essentially codes uh, supported by the underlying charts uh, within the EHR. Um, this is where our AI framework truly shines because we're employing agents to not just interact directly uh, with the uh, form, uh, but also uh, highlight uh, relevant text and add uh, relevant codes uh, into our HC coding tool uh, to really make the user experience well-rounded and uh, overall seamless for the user. Uh, in addition, uh, for where uh, we're highlighting text, uh, we uh, provide links to applicable text and uh, coding guidelines. So the user can also not just use this to uh, uh, see suggestions or tool, but um, uh, see that those suggestions can be trusted based on uh, underlying guidelines that they, you know, probably are uh, versed with or familiar with. Uh, so this, you know, I think really uh, emphasizes how our Kaziva companion, you know, with that AI framework, uh, can really uh, take uh, you know usability, user experiences to another uh, level within uh, healthcare IT applications. Um, it's uh, supporting processes that are typically very burdensome, like in this context, uh, medical coders have to process hundreds of charts and you know keep track of all those different guidelines while keeping uh, these different incentive programs in mind. And so this is a way we blended all that uh, into our uh, into those users' workflow, so that they still are in the loop as far as the decision making goes, but they have all the relevant context, uh, you know, from our AI assistant to uh, make uh, more informed decisions uh, and do so more efficiently. So, given our early successes with Kaziva Companion, uh, we've been able to witness the transformative impact that. Uh, uh, you know, you know, appropriately designed AI framework can have. Today, I hope you've seen that we've highlighted how our multimodal RAD human in the loop framework has the capacity to enhance operational efficiencies of our users. Um, yet, to fully realize AI's potential, we still need to continue uh, to rethink our current workflows. Um, and this venture extends beyond simply enhancing chatbot functionalities. It involves deploying AI agents capable of performing broader spectrum of tasks throughout our applications. Uh, to harness this transformative power, I think it's crucial to fully embrace the essence, um, meaning of AI fundamentally, meaning uh, we want to alter our operational methodologies to maximize the use of these technologies. This begins by, for example, reimagining uh, user workflows uh, to create systems that are not uh, only more intuitive, but significantly more efficient as well. Uh, you know, basic approach could be to target high click workflows aimed at substantially reducing the time and effort needed for crucial tasks. But at the same time, it's imperative to balance efficiency with accuracy. Um, you know, we don't have the luxury in healthcare to make mistakes or errors because uh, that can put patients' uh, lives at jeopardy. So you want to take a very proactive approach here and hopefully, you know, what I'm advocating for here and what you've seen demonstrated is uh, a strategy from the beginning to the end where a proactive strategy that diminishes errors by emphasizing the critical role humans are playing to for continuously improve, but then also review the output of the AI system. Our quest uh, for uh, innovation excellence is, um, you know, continuous, uh, just like with everything. Uh, and it's fueled by the invaluable feedback and insights of uh, you folks. Uh, and we're, uh, you know, fully committed to refine and further advance our AI framework. Uh, and, you know, we seek to do so uh, by, uh, you know, on the shoulders of the giants before us. 
uh, and you know leverage essentially the uh, latest breakthroughs uh, to you know keep enhancing uh, our approach. In the upcoming months, uh, however, we'll be focusing on uh, refining our AI framework uh, based on the feedback we're getting from our users uh, and further integrating uh, those innovations into broader uh, use cases um, that our users feel need to be further optimized. Further, we'll, you know, we got to keep cost, uh, you know, in, in mind. Running these large language models aren't free. Um, uh, and you know, while their costs are coming down, uh, we're still strategizing on smarter token uh, usage strategies, um, uh, and we're also you know considering more efficient uh, ways of leveraging LLMs, not just using one, but different uh, cost-effective LLMs uh, depending on our use case and needs. Moreover, we uh, right now are only using text uh, and images and tables uh, within our uh, multimodal knowledge base. Uh, we want to also use video content in uh, this space. There are a lot of seminars and video recordings and talks uh, describing you know, the uh, methodology policies. And uh, in general, uh, the video content is uh, you know, uh, quite common these days. So we want to incorporate that also as uh, a modality of information that our um, uh, um, AI framework can uh, leverage within its knowledge base. Uh, we also want to further extend um, and enhance our chunking strategies and prompt templates. Uh, as I mentioned, those are very uh, key in the success of our AI framework and AI assistant. Uh, and so we want to continue to refine those based on how our users interact with our assistant and the feedback that we get from them as well as our subject matter experts. And lastly, integrating AI framework um, you know, is while it's important, it has to be done uh, with uh, the validations and audits kind of at front and center. Um, you know, especially in the context of healthcare, uh, like I said, you cannot afford errors. So um, we are committed to providing uh, more automation on this front uh, so that our users can uh, trust and be confident that the insights and guidance that they derive from our AI assistance and uh, integrations actually. Uh, help them uh, as opposed to uh, leaving them uh, leading them down the wrong paths. Well, thank you for your attention. Uh, for further information, please feel to feel free to reach out to us at info at Otherwise, I'll now take questions.